Welcome back to Actionpedia, the show where we look at terminology from the gaming world and explain their meaning, history, and relevance today. In this episode, we're once again entering the world of fighting games and looking at one of the most fundamental and most complex concepts in the genre. The tense moment where both players approach each other and try to figure out how to land a clean hit. Footsies. But first, a quick disclaimer. This should serve as a satisfactory introduction to footsies and why it's so important to the fighting game genre. If you want to get down and dirty, pick apart frame data and build flowcharts, there are plenty of resources online for that. That's not what this is about. With that out of the way, we hope you enjoy our take on the history of footsies. First, we're going to have to make sure that we're all on the same page of one of fighting games core concepts, the neutral game. In fighting games, the flow of the match is constantly changing. Sometimes, one player has an advantage over their opponent, other times, neither player has the upper hand. This ambiguous state, where neither player has the edge, is called the neutral game. Typically, players will be a bit farther apart, shooting projectiles, fainting engagements, and jockeying for position. As soon as one player makes a mistake, they throw out a laggy move on block, they whiff something at a bad range, or they mess up their movement, then we shift into the punish game. Punishes are making your opponent pay for any mistakes they make. A punish can be anything from a single jab to a full combo. The objective of pretty much every fighting game is to catch your opponent slipping and punish them as hard as you can. So how does one win the neutral game? For that, we're going to talk about footsies. Footsies is a term that originated in arcades in the mid-1990s and was used for games like Street Fighter, Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, and many others. In essence, footsies is the mid-range neutral game where players are close enough to threaten their opponent's space with normals like punches and kicks, but not too close that attacks are actually hitting. It's sort of like a dance, where each player is testing the waters until the temperature feels just right and they can comfortably jump in. Infill defines footsies in his fighting game glossary as, quote, a complicated, often nebulous term that refers to the battle for controlling the space in front of you, often by using good pokes. In essence, you are trying to get to a range you like while trying to deny your opponent getting to a range that they like. How you do this varies wildly based on the game, but it often involves using strong crouching kick attacks to pester your opponent as they are trying to walk around. This dance of playing mind games with your feet is the source of the term's name. So yeah, full disclosure, footsies is not an easy thing to nail down. But there are certain aspects that we can isolate to make it easier to understand. This definition we found on Quora sums up footsies pretty nicely. Footsies is used, one, to predict where the opponent's hurtboxes are going to be at a given time and control that area with your hitboxes. Two, footsies is used to make your location difficult to predict, so the opponent will not be able to do number one to you. Theoretically, that all sounds pretty easy. So let's put these concepts into context by looking at Street Fighter 2 Turbo. In Street Fighter 2 Turbo, low kicks were essential to keeping your opponent honest in their decision making. Want to walk forward? If you're not ready to block, you'll eat a kick to the shins. Want to throw out a move? If your hurt box extends too far forward, you'll eat a kick to the shins. Want to shoot a projectile? My kick has a faster startup and it's pointed right at your dumb little shins. By being able to throw out a low kick into the space in front of you, your opponent has to respect and move around that space. To do this, you need to know what options are available to you and what options are available to your opponent. Let's say we've got a match between two Ken players. Since both players are playing the same character, it's easy to know what you can and can't do. Your low kick has the same range as their low kick. Your Hadouken has the same frame data as their Hadouken. So playing footsies in this kind of setting is simple. You know that if they jump at an unsafe angle, you can punish with an anti-air or shoryu. But where footsies starts to become more complex is when two players are playing different characters. If you are playing Ken and your opponent is playing Dal Sim, suddenly you have to account for the long range of his stretchy limbs. On the flip side, if they're playing Zangief, you can no longer just block when your opponent approaches because you might get grabbed and eat some serious damage. Suddenly, Every matchup requires a new set of knowledge and a new game plan of how to play footsies. But footsies is more than just knowing options and responding like a robot. Although there are certain interactions which can be quote unquote 
played perfectly on paper, any fighting game player worth their salt will tell you that there are a lot of situations where you're just not 100% sure of what's coming next. Which brings us to our final core concept, the mix-up. Mix-ups epitomize the mental side of fighting games. This is where you take all of your knowledge of the game and combine it with your knowledge of the person next to you. It's deception. It's confusion. It's Sun Tzu's art of war. Well, not really. But it is the art of conditioning a person to expect one thing and catching them off guard by doing something else. In the context of footsies, mix-ups are how you expose openings. Are you noticing that every time you throw out a low kick, your opponent neutral jumps? Maybe this time you can approach, make it look like you're going to low kick, and DP to catch them in the air. Got a knockdown? Condition them to block by throwing out jabs as they get up, and then mix them up by grabbing instead. Anything to keep your opponent guessing. Mix-ups are essential to conditioning your opponent to think one thing, and then exposing them by doing something else. Can't really spam the specials anymore, but he's got extra range. Bruh. The no. relentless. The pressure. Oh my god. Yo, the pressure. Yeah. The depth of learning and understanding matchups in fighting games is why they've survived for so long. And as players began to master older, simpler fighting games, developers wanted to make it harder for them to solve their games. Towards the end of the 1990s and into the early 2000s, some fighting games began pushing players to be more aggressive in an effort to speed up gameplay and make things more exciting. One game that is a perfect example of this is Guilty Gear. One of the goals of its creator, Daisuke Ishiwatari, was to create a more aggressive, action-packed game. In Guilty Gear X, the tension gauge was introduced, which rewarded players for choosing aggressive options like throwing out attacks and walking forward over defensive options like backdashing and blocking. The incentive to be more aggressive fundamentally changed the risk-reward of playing footsies, as now you could go in hard, eat a couple of hits, and be rewarded with meter to make your next combo hit harder. The primary objective was no longer to avoid getting hit at all costs. On top of this, for players and spectators alike, rushdown-centric gameplay can be much more exciting than watching two Shotos low-kicking at each other for an entire round. While not really a mainstream game at the time, Guilty Gear is an example of games moving away from slow, meticulous gameplay in favor of offense and aggression. And this idea of overwhelming opponents with brute force is best illustrated by our next title. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a game which plays very differently than most traditional fighting games. There are a number of reasons for this, but one of the most notable is the introduction of directional air dashes. In most traditional fighting games, jumping is a big commitment. If you jump in place, you will land in the same place you started. If you jump forward, you can't alter your trajectory, so if you get red, you'll be eating an anti-air for breakfast. While Marvel vs. Capcom 2 wasn't the first game to have air dashes in it, games like Darkstalkers had it back in 1994, MVC2 popularized it like no other. Now, Jumping wasn't necessarily a dangerous commitment, but rather a fundamental part of how some characters work. Take Storm for example. Storm is an 8-way air dasher. This means that after a jump, she can air dash in any of the 8 directions you can hold the joystick. So rather than a jump being a 100% commitment, Storm can jump and then throw in a mix-up. Will she do a regular jumping attack? Jump into a backwards air dash to stay safe? A triangle jump to try and catch you off guard with an overhead? Air dashes open up a lot of possibilities and complicated the game of footsies like no other. Now, an opponent who is in the air has several options and mix-ups to choose from, and simply throwing out a shoryu when you see them jump won't cut it anymore. There are those who lamented its fast pace and offense-first gameplay. Jokes about quote-unquote Marvel footsies being mash and jab until something lands, or Marvel players getting washed in any other fighting games aside, MVC2 is an example of a game which fundamentally changed the way that footsies is played today. Uh oh! Uh oh! Justin Wong! Oh my god! Oh my god! This trend towards complication was only getting started in the early 2000s. As anime fighters began to get more popular, mostly for their high speed and notorious difficulty, titles like Blaze Blue and Guilty Gear Exert epitomized speed and aggression. On top of that, roster sizes skyrocketed across the board. With games like Ultra Street Fighter 4 having 44 playable characters, Tekken 7 having 54, 
some of whom will have nearly 200 unique moves, and Smash Ultimate having 89 characters. That's a lot of matchups to learn. But not all games want to be harder, or faster, or more complicated than whatever came out before it. And one game at the forefront of making games simple again is an indie game aptly named Footsies. The game's description says, quote, Footsies retains the fundamental feeling of the fighting game genre, where spacing, hit confirms, and whiff punishes are key to achieving victory. Oh, come on! I got the... I hit the low forward! I held forward there! There's no air dashing, no projectiles, no 69 hit combos. Just two players with the same options and clearly defined rules of how to beat the other person. Alright, spammer. Me versus spammer? Alright, look spammer. <laughs> Alright, I see why he's called spammer. In order to win in footsies, you have to be really good at footsies. Controlling your own space with hitboxes, punishing your opponent for overextending, and knowing how to hit confirm are fundamental aspects of all fighting games. And footsies strips away all of the excess to give a lesson in fighting game fundamentals. And some of the big names in the genre have tried to revert back to a simpler formula as well. Street Fighter V and Guilty Gear Strive are two examples of games which are a little bit easier than their predecessors. Regardless of what fighting game you're playing, Footsies is going to be a part of it. Colin North describes it best in his article for GG Noob, where he says, quote, The concept of Footsies is so huge that you can't really pin it down in a specific way. It encompasses all of the important fighting game ideas. Spacing, baiting, zoning, whiff punishes, corner pressure, the list goes on and on. Your understanding of footsies will only grow as you continue to learn and master various aspects of fighting games. And if all of this sounds overwhelming, then one thing you should take away from this video is that the core of fighting games boils down to one thing and one thing only. Who amongst your friends is the best at kicking shins? This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mav, Pachanas, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, and Marco for being Diamond supporters. Thanks for sticking with us. Check us out on Instagram, link in the description. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.